Hey everyone, it's Shahir from 5 Academy. Welcome back to another video. So today what we're gonna be doing is going through about 10 to 11 really simple but really important concepts that show up a lot on the math test, especially in the first 30 questions. So I'm gonna give you not just the, a method to do it, but a method to solve these repetitive problems that is gonna be very quick and allow you to get through the beginning of the test very quickly. This is important because the last half of the exam is filled with more difficult problems. So uh, follow along. Hopefully these methods make sense and you can implement them on your tests, saving time, okay? All right, first problem. Four is to 34 as 124 is to X. What does X equal? Okay, four is to 34 as 124 is to X. You're just gonna do cross multiply divide. Four X is equal to 124 times 34. I believe that's 42, 16. Divide both sides by four. X equals 42, 16 divided by four is 1054. Okay, just gotta set up the proportion. The one, two, three, four go in the spots like this. When you get an, uh, an expression like this, okay? Simple algebra and distribution. Okay, we have this here, what's x? What we're gonna do is distribute this to each of these. 75x squared plus 12x minus 75x squared equals 9x minus 15. These two cancel out. 12x is equal to 9x minus 15. Subtract 9x on both sides. 3x is equal to negative 15. Divide both sides by 3. x is equal to negative 5. Okay, key is make sure you distribute properly and ensure that you carry negatives down as needed, like I did to the negative 75x squared. Here. Mean, median, mode. How do we do this? Tori uses a lot of sticky notes. During the month of January, she used this many. The next month, she used this many. And the next month, she used that. Which of the following is the difference between the mean and median of Tori's monthly sticky note usage rounded to the nearest hundredth? Okay, what's the median? We're going to order the numbers. 108, 110, 119. That's your median. Uh, mean, it's going to be all of them added together, divide by the number of numbers. 108 plus 110 plus 119 divided by three is the number of numbers. 108 plus 110, I'm doing it on my calculator. It's 112.33. Now the question's asking for the difference between them. If I find that, just do subtraction on your calculator, it's 6.67. All but knowing what mean, median mode are, you should be able to take that away from what I did here. Frequency charts, how do we do this? 35 students in a class took an exam. The chart below displays the grade distribution. What percent of the students scored above a D? So above a D would be if you got a C, B, or A. We're gonna add that number together, seven plus 11 plus 11. And we're gonna, in order to find a percent, right, we wanna find what proportion of students out of the entire set got this, fit in these categories. So the entire set is gonna be those students plus the people that got Ds and Fs, right? So four plus two. Now you just do this on your calculator, you get in the numerator uh, 29, divide by 35 in the denominator, that gives you about C. If you do it on your calculator, yes, it gives you C. Polynomials, how do we do this? Let the function G be defined as this, at what X value does G of X equal 29, okay? Now when a problem is telling you that G of X is equal to one thing and then G of X is also equal to something else, that means you're it's telling you to make those two things equal to each other. 29 is equal to three X plus five. Then you just do the simple solution like this, uh, 3x, divide both sides by 3, we get x equals 8. So remember, if you're given things to plug in, plug them in, make them equal to each other. This is going to help you solve the problem. Least common multiple, greatest common factor. What we're going to do for a least common multiple problem like this, we're going to take all of the answer options and divide them by all three of these numbers and see which one is the smallest answer option that's divisible by all three. So you'll divide this by all three on your calculator, then divide this by all three on your calculator, and whichever of the smallest, whichever smallest answer option here meets the criteria of being divisible by all three, that's your least common multiple. Now, if it was a greatest common factor problem, you do it in reverse. It would ask you what's the greatest common factor uh, of these three numbers. And then what you'd find is you'd, all the answer options would be smaller than these three numbers. And in that case, you would uh, divide the numbers here by what's in the answer option. So it's kind of reverse, okay? Remember, you're always dividing the larger numbers by the smaller ones and checking to see which one meets the criteria or is divisible. Two numbers have a sum of 10 and a difference of 8. The two numbers multiplied together gives what? So if they have a sum of 10, let's just say x plus y equals 10. And then if a difference of 8, let's just say x minus y is equal to 8, right? Um, now what I'm going to do, I have a system of linear equations. I will make this equal to y. So let's subtract x on both sides. y equals 10 minus x. And then this one, what I'm going to do is take my y, which is equal to 10 minus x, plug it right there. So that means x minus 10 minus x is equal to eight. 
Now I have everything in terms of x. I can solve for x. Distribute the negative to each of these. So x minus 10 plus x is equal to 8. 2x minus 10 is equal to 8. Add 10 on both sides. 2x is equal to 18. Divide by 2. x equals 9. Scientific notation. Okay, how do we do this? So if it's a multiplication or division, you can really divide the problem into two different steps. First, you're going to multiply or divide these two guys here, and then you're going to multiply or divide these two guys here. Let's do these ones. So 1.3 times 1.11 is equal to, do it on your calculator, 1.443. So you already know these are out. And then 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 0, you can do that on your calculator. Uh, but I know that um, in this case, it's just going to be 10 to the 6th because 10 to the 0 is just one literally so um 10 to the sixth okay properties of exponents four percent of the test all right so how do we do a problem like this remember that if you have for example a to the b and all of that is raised to the c then the answer is going to be a to the b times c so that's the case where you have an exponent raised to an exponent like we do here we have exponents raised to an exponent via the parentheses so what we're going to do is just treat this like individual problems we have the four x squared, y to the third, c to the fourth. So it's really going to be 4 to the second times x to the second squared times y to the third squared times z to the fourth squared. That gives you 16, x to the 2 times 2, which is 4, y to the 3 times 2, which is 6, and z to the 4 times 2, which is 8. Uh, looks like this is the answer. We're almost done. Solving problems in the context of money. Very common as well. Kevin works at a local theme park earning an hourly wage of this. 20%, 24% of his income goes towards taxes. What proportion of his income is going towards taxes? Okay, so it's literally asking you to convert 24% to a proportion or a fraction, as you can see here. Some calculators might be able to do this for you. What I would just say is do 24 divided by 100 and try to simplify that down. So I know it's divisible by 2 on both top and bottom, so 20, 12 over 50. Still divisible by 2, I can get that to 6 over 25, and that's my answer. Uh, what you could do on the other side is just divide each of these and find the decimal equivalent. You'll find that this is equal to 0 0.24, and that corresponds to 24%. Last problem type. So this is factoring. What are, which of the following are the integer factors used to solve the equation here? x squared minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. What you're going to do is find factors of 3, 1 and 3, that are equal to negative 4 when you add them together. Let's make those both negative. They both multiply to positive 3 and add up to negative 4. So x minus 1, you're going to plug them into this format and then make them equal to 0. x minus 1 is going to equal to 0 or x minus 3 is going to equal 0. That gives you x equals 1 if you solve this, right? If you do plus one here, plus one here. If you do plus three here, plus three here, you get x equals one or x equals three. If you're not sure, you can plug these back in here and check to make sure, hey, does do these two numbers make this equation equal to zero? And in this case, they do. That's the video. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, just trying to show you how to solve these problems quickly. If you guys want a more in-depth breakdown, let me know. We can do that in a future video. But uh, again, hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if there's any questions in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer. All right, see you all in the next video.